Today we're reviewing the AMD RX 7800 XT. This is the $500 card that is coming to the market. Uh, we also have the 7700 XT, it's back there. We're gonna have a separate video on that coming out today as well. But this one is focused on the 78 XT. So for this benchmarking, a couple things to consider. One is that as with everything else, this current generation, there's a lot of last gen cards that are still very relevant and still available in a lot of cases. So we're gonna be looking at those a little more closely than we might for just say uh, any other modern GPU launch because there's a lot of options in the $400 to $500 range. Secondly, the 7700 XT is $450. So there's only a $50 price gap between this and the 77, which makes that comparison particularly interesting. And that's why we want a separate video to focus on it. For this one though, we're gonna look at the 78, including in Starfield, because we can't get away from that game right now. Uh, and let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace and visiting squarespace.com slash gamersnexus will give you 10% off your first purchase with them. We've built a number of our own websites with Squarespace, including our recently launched gamers.nexus site, where we list catastrophic PC hardware failures to inform subscribers of those failures. I built this site personally in a couple of hours by using Squarespace's Fluid Engine to move blocks around visually until I liked it. We also built our store website with Squarespace using its built-in e-commerce tools. And of course, we built a website for our CEO Snowflake because she demanded our audience know who really runs the show. Get to the core of your idea and spend less time on web design by signing up at squarespace.com slash gamersnexus or click the link below. Okay, so full disclosure right up front. Uh, I am exhausted, so is the team. We've been working nonstop on benchmarking Starfield. I know, boohoo, uh, no one cares. The reason that I'm mentioning it though is because it's actually pushed us to finally put our normal game benchmark charts into a summary charts. And they're actually super cool. They're gonna be at the end of this video. And the reason the exhaustion caused that is because at the end of the process, wrote all the charts, uh, and then we kind of looked at it and said, so what do we think? And we put together some summaries. Those will be at the end, because we've been adding more and more games to our test suite, including uh, we've added Dying Light 2 and Resident Evil 4, and then of course Starfield. And so having those plus our existing suite, uh, we've got enough now where we can put together an overall percent improvement from card A versus card B. Anyway, those will be at the end to help us make a decision so we can come to conclusions. Now, uh, for this setup here, AMD thinks that this card is the true successor to the RX 6800. Not the 6800 XT, the 6800. This is the 7800 XT. So uh, AMD has chosen by name and marketing and signaling to the customer uh, to say this is the successor, but then sort of by spec and in a sense MSRP pricing, it's saying that the 6800 non-XT is the original predecessor to this. We don't really care about any of that <laughs> because it's just marketing. What we care about is how it performs the 6800 XT because it's the same price. So we saw a couple that are still available, at least in the US with some of the retailers we check and Looking at Newegg, Amazon, there's a few listings for around 500 bucks, plus or minus $20. That makes the 68 XT actually a direct competitor to the 78 XT while you can still get it. And if you're willing to deal with a secondhand card, something like eBay may give you a ton of options from the 30 series and the 6000 series alike, including something like a 3080. Some quick pricing numbers. All of these are plus or minus 20 bucks. We just glanced at uh, Newegg and Amazon to get these. So the 4070 Ti right now, it's still around 800 bucks, plus or minus a bit. The 4070 is around $600. The 4060 Ti is around $400. And the 4060 non-Ti is 300. For AMD, if you haven't checked in a while, the 7900 XT has fallen in price since launch. It's about 800 bucks, plus or minus a bit now. The 6950 XT, if you can find it, uh, appears to be 630, but we really didn't see many listings. The 6900 XT, same situation, that was about 600. 6800 XT was 500 or so when we could find it. And then 6700 XT was about 330. So those set up the key comparison points versus the 6800 XT. Uh, we're not gonna go through the spec sheet today. We already have a, a spec video on this. If you wanna check it out, we talk about it there. Uh, the main difference though, is that this is a cut CU count from the 6800 XT. So the difference there is 12 CUs. If you look at AMD's spec web page, it's 60 versus 72. Uh, and that's gonna contribute in situations where architecture alone and frequency changes can't pick up for the 12 CU difference. Because technically one-to-one, -one, they're not directly comparable. There are changes generationally, but uh, there's still an advantage to those CUs. And we're gonna show you that today 
in our summary chart, especially for, for some of the 4K tests. So that's enough setup. Uh, we've got a lot to go through today for data. We have compacted it a lot more than normally, though. So the, the charts, we speed run, run them after we get through the first couple. Let's get into it. We'll start with Starfield, seeing as that's what we've spent the last week testing. At 4K high, the RX 7800 XT ran at 48.7 FPS average, with lows at 37 and 27. Those are paced similarly to what we saw elsewhere. This game is kind of a mess for performance, but it's at least consistently a mess, and that's all that really matters for benchmarking. For current generation flanks, the RTX 4060 Ti 8GB, about $100 cheaper, ran at 30.5 FPS average. That allows the 7800 XT a lead of 60%, a massive increase, at a cost of about 25% increase MSRP to MSRP. The 4070 is priced around $100 higher and lands at 39.5 FPS average, giving the 7800 XT a lead still of 23%, while the 4070 is more expensive than it. In at least Starfield, AMD is currently in a strong lead. We'll revisit this as things patch and change to see if that remains, but for now at least, they're in a better starting point than Nvidia, and it may remain that way. As for more expensive options, in this particular title and with this game version, only the other AMD cards would be worth considering. The 7900 XT improves by 32% at 64 FPS average, while costing around $790 to $820 or so today. Finally, as compared to the 6800 XT, which is a similar price if you can still find one, the 7800 XT holds a lead of about 10%. The game may be messy for performance, but AMD's relative positioning is currently extremely competitive for the 7800 XT in this title. At 1440p high, the 7800 XT ran at 79 FPS average, with lows at 50 and 36. That has it ahead of the 6800 XT by 10%, so that much remains the same. The 7800 XT leads the 7800 XT by 22.5% in this test, down from 32% previously. That's because the 7900XT is starting to hit a CPU bottleneck, so there'd be more room to scale if not for that limiter. Compared to Nvidia price competitors, the 7800XT leads the 4070 by 23%, and the 4060Ti by 62%. Scaling is similar to the 4K high setting, and AMD is incredibly strong with its 7800XT positioning as compared to the 4070 and the 4060Ti in this particular game. We have one more resolution before we see how it does in other games. At 1080p, the 7800 XT was nearing our CPU bind. The 7900 XT isn't present here because it's irrelevant. It's also CPU bound, so uh, that alongside the 4090 and the 7900 XTX all look the same. There's no room to scale here, so let's move to the next one. Dying Light 2 is new to our benchmark suite. Starting at 4K and with a custom high configuration, the 7800 XT ran at 45.7 FPS average with lows well timed. That has the 7800 XT as about 9.6% higher frame rate than the 4070, it's about 39% higher than the 6700 XT, and similarly, it's ahead of the 4060 Ti. The 6800 XT ended up ahead of the 7800 XT, embarrassingly for AMD, this time with a 12% lead. That's more than just a partner model difference. It looks like AMD's choices on the CU count may have impacted it here. As for the 4070 Ti, that leads by 19%. Now for 1440p, here the 7800 XT ran at 85.5 FPS average with frame times again overall consistent and well paced. The 3080 leads, followed by the 6800 XT, which itself holds a lead over the 7800 XT of 13%. These companies, it's embarrassing what they're doing with their naming scheme, and it's amazing how much less embarrassing the generational losses would be, both for Nvidia and AMD, if they would just stop trying to trick people into thinking the cards are worth more than they are just by changing the name. At 1080p, the RX 7800 XT's 117 FPS average still afforded the 6800 XT a 12% lead. It's also about tied with the RTX 4070, including the lows. Compared to the 4060 Ti, the lead is about 30% here. AMD's biggest competition right now appears to be itself. From their perspective, that's probably not bad. Resident Evil 4 is up now, another new game in our test suite for this overhaul. At 4K, the 7800 XT ran at 72 FPS average, with frame times again consistent. This game appears to pace frames well for most of these cards. The RX 6800 XT leads the 7800 XT, now by 6.2%, and the 7800 XT ends up ahead of the 4070 and roughly tied with the 3080 this time. At 1440p, the 7800 XT's 136 FPS average has it again just below the 6800 XT, ahead of the 4070 by 9%, and ahead of the 6700 XT by a much larger 47%. 
Total Warhammer is up now. At 4K, the 7800 XT sits at 56 FPS average with relatively low 1% lows compared to the GPUs ahead of it. The 7900 XT leads by 39% at 78 FPS average, with the 7800 XTX about 70% ahead. As for other GPUs, the lead over the 4060 Ti is 44%, establishing a strong position against Nvidia's recent launch. The 4070 is tied with the 7800 XT in all metrics for this one, with the 6800 XT a bit behind. But 4K is demanding for the 7800 XT. Moving to 1440p, the 7800 XT's 116 FPS average has it about 4% ahead of the 4070 in average FPS. The 4060 Ti is far behind, allowing a 44% lead to the 7800 XT. As for the 6950 XT, that one establishes itself as a strong alternative if you can grab one of the last remaining cheaper models, with a lead of 7% over the 7800 XT. The 7900 XT jumps 39% ahead with its 161 FPS average, so there is still a large gulf between AMD's new GPU and its prior one step down from flagship option. If they were to do some type of refresh, we'd expect it to land in between these two. Compared to the flanking 4070 Ti, the 7800 XT gives up a 20% lead to Nvidia's much more expensive $800 alternative. Users of an RTX 2060, 3060, or an AMD RX 5700 XT would probably find value in an upgrade here. At 1080p, the 7800 XT still has plenty of CPU scaling headroom to take advantage of. The 7900 XT has a 37% lead over the 78 XT, with the 4070 about tied within 4% of the new AMD GPU. The 4060 Ti remains somewhat distant and will be a better comparison to the 7700 XT in our next review video later today. Last generation 6800 XT managed nearly identical performance to the 78 XT, with the 6950 XT pushing a little further ahead once again. If you're wondering what the extra $300 gets you from the Nvidia side, the 4070 Ti would yield again about a 20% uplift, so not great value comparatively. In Tomb Raider at 4K, the RX 7800 XT held a 93 FPS average with frame times highly consistent and well paced at 83 and 79. That has it behind the 4070 on a technicality, but in reality, they're effectively tied. The 6800 XT also leads by a few percentage points, with the 6950 XT a more notable 23% ahead. The 4070 Ti holds a similar lead here as well. Compared to cheaper options, the 6700 XT manages to achieve 74% of the performance of the 7800 XT, with the 4060 Ti around the same positioning. Moving to a 4070 Ti or 7800 XT would gain you between 26% and 36% more performance. We're going to start going through these charts a lot faster now just to sort of rip through some numbers because we have the foundation here and it's a pattern. At 1440p, the 7800 XT moves to 167 FPS average with frame times again consistently timed. The 4070 has a technical lead of 2% here with the 4070 Ti more noteworthy at 23% again. While we're up here, the 7900 XT keeps a 31% advantage over the new car. Cheaper options like the 67 XT or the 4060 Ti are outpaced by the 78 XT by about 32%. Finally, for Tomb Raider, 1080p has the 7800 XT at 223 FPS average, pushing the card close to the 7900 XT due to external bottlenecks. The CPU is limiting the scaling room here, so everything north of 230 FPS is bound. You can ignore all of those results because they're not scaling properly, they are restricted by other components. The growth over the 6700 XT was 25% here. Horizon Zero Dawn is in brief Briefly now, in this one, the 7800 XT's 85 FPS average had it functionally tied with the 6800 XT and the RTX 4070, including in frame time pacing. The lead over the 6700 XT was 51%, that's a generational jump, but it is also technically by name a new skew, or higher skew. Uh, and then there's a near doubling of the 5700 XT's frame rate as well. As for the other direction, the 4070 Ti leads by 14%, with the 7900 XT ahead by about 25%. At 1440p, the 7800 XT is about tied with the 6800 XT. It's ahead of the 4070 by 3.9%. It's ahead of the 6700 XT by 42% and the 4060 Ti by about the same. Once again, we're seeing about an 84% lead over the 5700 XT, so users of that GPU or the older 3060 or 2060 cards may see an opening for an upgrade in this generation's uh, modern mid-range. The hesitation there because pricing has migrated quite a lot. This used to be considered high-end, but it's been a while. 1080p didn't prove useful for this game. We were CPU bound, so moving on. In Final Fantasy XIV at 4K, the 7800 XT posted an 85 FPS average result, although the 0.1% lows are behind where they should be. This has been true of AMD's hardware in general, and the current version of this testing process 
for this specific game, so it's not unique to the 7800 XT. The 7800 XT manages to lead the 6700 XT by 31%, similar to the 1080 Ti and actually the 4060 Ti. The 4070 is ahead of the 7800 XT in this one by about 6.8%, and the 6800 XT pushes a little higher still, gaining 15% over the 7800 XT. As a final reference point toward the top of this chart, the extra money spent on a 4070 Ti would gain you 37% or so, or 46% at the 7800 XT level. So, better gains than we've seen at the top end of this than in some of these other games that we've tested. At 1440p, the lows behave the same way as we saw at 4K. That's a specific frame time pacing behavior, again related to Final Fantasy XIV's benchmark here. The 7800 XT's 184 FPS average has it ahead of the 4060 Ti by 28%, and has the 4070 non-Ti ahead by 5%. The cards are becoming limited at the top of this chart, allowing the 4070 Ti to pull ahead. But we're bottlenecked on the CPU now, so let's move on. Ray tracing is up now. We're keeping this brief since we just added a bunch of games to our test for rasterization, but we're adding more RT testing in the next round to accompany those changes. Starting with F122 at 4K with RT on, the 7800 XT ran about equal to the 6800 XT. It's not great for AMD given that some of the prices of the 6800 XT lately, especially if you go used, are fairly competitive with the new card. The 4070 has about a 5% lead here, so not much, but our resolution is also high. Let's move to 1440p. At 1440p with RT, the RX 7800 XT again roughly tied with the 6800 XT. It leads the 4060 Ti by 18%, with the 4070 leading the 7800 XT by 7%. Moving to Tomb Raider with RT Shadows, first at 4K, the 7800 XT was tied with the 68 XT. The lead over the 4060 Ti is massive, and that's due to the resolution here. That reduces and compresses as the resolution also reduces. The 4070 maintains a 5% lead here. 1440p brings the lower end closer to the 7800 XT, like the 4060 Ti, but it allows the 4070 to pull ahead a little bit and grow its lead to 10% now. Otherwise, the 6800 XT, again, is about the same as the 7800 XT. Now for power consumption. The RX 7800 XT pulled 248 watts when stock in a full workload. Overclocking it gave us headroom up to 293 watts. That has the stock 248 watt 7800 XT as more efficient than, for example, Intel's A750. Nvidia's 290 watt 4070 Ti Tough, the one by Asus, pulled more power but also ran a higher frame rate than the 78 XT. Compared to the 6800 XT, the 7800 XT consumed about 50 watts less power in this workload. All right, conclusions. So, again, full disclosure, it's been an exhausting week with the Starfield benchmarks plus this. Uh, so I have had to make things as simple as possible because I need to sleep, frankly speaking. <laughs> I think the editing team can speak for me here. Uh, so we're going to defer to the new charts for some numbers. One important point with these summaries, first of all, in scenarios of a CPU bind, like some of the 1080p tests, for example, you're not going to see much change from card A to card B. That's normal. That's because the cards are limited by another component. And so that, that's not sort of the real number. So if you see a 0.2% change where everything else is 10 or 20, that's why, if it's 1080p especially. Uh, another point is that this is, we're trying to keep the percent math all in one direction where possible. Just uh, math, percent math is a little funny. Uh, so we mostly shoot for a percent improvement. And that means in the title of the chart, it's going to say from A to B. That means from baseline card A, so let's say a, a 7800 XT to a 6800 XT, what is the percent improvement going that direction? Because that is actually how this ended up working, as you saw in the video. Okay, so this first chart is for the 4070 versus the 7800 XT, and it shows the percent improvement from the 4070 to the 78 XT, meaning that the favor is the 7800 XT here. The 7800 XT generally bested the 4070, sometimes in large ways. You see that particularly at 4K, but we already know the 40 series, like with say the 4060 Ti versus the 3060 Ti has issues with these higher resolutions. But now the chart is flipped. This is with ray tracing. So now we're looking at the change from the 7800 XT to the 4070. When ray traced, the 4070 was a clear winner. It's anywhere from five to 15% better in these charts, with RT workloads. We had another game as well. It's not on this chart. Uh, but we're adding a couple more ray trace games now that we've refreshed the rasterized games. This summary chart looks at the improvement from the 7800 XT to the 6800 XT, meaning that the bars going in the positive direction to the right are the percentage advantage that the 68 XT has over the new 7800 XT. In most of our test scenarios, the 6800 XT bests the 7800 XT 
It's embarrassing by name, at least. Fortunately for AMD, the 6800 XT had a higher initial MSRP. Unfortunately for AMD, it's readily available for cheap if used, or in a couple places we checked, about the same price when new. Some of the improvements are drastic, like Strange Brigade, Vulcan especially, uh, like at 4K, or Final Fantasy at 4K. Some are more tempered. Here's the chart for the 4060 Ti to the 7800 XT. In this one, the 7800 XT has it by a mile. Sorry, some of you don't use the Imperial system, I forget about that. Uh, for clarity, a mile is 7.99998 furlongs. Uh, hopefully that helps. The 4060 Ti loses by a lot to the 7800 XT given the, well, normally $100 price gap, but the 16 gigabyte one is like the same price. NVIDIA's 4060 Ti therefore seems to be exactly where we left it, which is the trash. If nothing else, the 7800 XT has at least proven that the 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 Ti, which is the same card, just with more memory, is probably one of the worst possible values you could buy right now, or maybe any time in the last couple of years, outside of things like Titan class cards for gaming. So uh, that, that hasn't changed. The 4060 Ti still doesn't make much sense. Uh, the 6800 XT is pretty compelling if you can still find it. That's the problem, though. Um, hopefully that helps you make a decision, though. You've got all the numbers. We wanted to package these results as neatly as we could in an approachable fashion. Uh, we don't normally display things this way, so hopefully you like it. And uh, if not too bad, we're going to keep doing them anyway, but we're going to keep iterating on it to add some more games to it as things go. And the biggest thing that happens here is NVIDIA gets eviscerated in rasterization just in general for pricing or value right now when looking at the 4060 ti the 4070 even we expect something also to slot in between the 7900 xt and the 7800 xt that seems like maybe it's supposed to be the 7900 gre but that's not an official launch so amd still got a large gap in its pricing range but recently uh, amd did state that it's done launching gpus for this generation with new asics that kind of leaves some wiggle room for a refresh, but this would be the place we'd expect to see one if they make one. Definitely an embarrassing showing as compared to the 6800 XT though, which is again about the same price right now. So we'd just say buy that instead if you can, if you're shopping in this price class. It's a good guard. Now, our main concern with the 78 XT has been that underperformance versus the 6000 series. It's more power efficient on a technicality. Well, it, it depends which game you look at, but generally speaking, it's more power efficient. It's just it's underperforming versus what the naming would suggest. And we saw that with the 4060 Ti versus the 3060 Ti. Yeah, the problem, it comes down to marketing. They want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to call it a higher end card than it is, but they don't want to make it a higher end card. They just want the money for it. Um, so, you know, this one, <laughs> it's at least positioned competitively worth with NVIDIA right now. That's the thing that we like about it compared to a 4070, uh, especially compared to a 4060 Ti and absolutely compared to a 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, this is competitively positioned. AMD has done well on the pricing standpoint to get there. Uh, RT is a different, different story, but that much is better. But as long as some of these other cards like 68 XTs are still on the market, you really should look into those, see if the pricing makes sense for you. Depends a lot on region. Uh, and if you're okay with use, we really would encourage you to explore those options because now more than ever, there's, there's, it's just so many used options on the market. Uh, you take some risk with that. You might save a lot of money, though, for more power. All right, you've got the numbers. We're going to let you make the decision on this one, and we're going to roll into the 7700 XT review. We've got some more to, to think about and talk about for the differences with these cards, uh, and that'll be next. So check back for that. As always, subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help fund my benchmarking addiction. <laughs> we'll see you all in the next one.